Hello, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. I'm very pleased to say that I have a special guest on the show this week, and it's uh, Michael Fogler, the author of the book Unjobbing. Hi, Michael. Welcome to the show. Hi, Jake. Glad to be here. Thank you so much for coming on. I, I'm a big fan of your book. We have discussed it a couple of times uh, previously on this podcast, so it's great to have the opportunity to talk to you about the ideas in Unjobbing. Great. Yeah, I, I was able to listen to those podcasts. Awesome. <laughs> what did you think of the uh, of the thoughts that uh, that people had about your book? I think it's good. I, th- I think there's a there's a good. Um, it's important to really look into them and question them and apply it to your particular situation. Uh, all that's good. Well, that's great. I, I, I think just maybe what I thought might be useful to start, because um, some people also won't have heard that yet, is I think, you know, before we talk about unjobbing, one of the things that you raise in the book is, is really the problem with the jobs. And, you know, there's some great examples in there and about the sort of traditional view of jobs. So you talk about in the book... The idea that sort of that we all absorb uh, in in society generally, which is that it's important to be happy, but you really need to focus on your career and your job is is vitally um, sort of important. Mm. Uh, is that you know how how would you characterize the sort of messages that people um, that people absorb the traditional view of jobs and, and what do you, you know, what, what do you think people take on um, by absorbing those views? Uh, I think they take on a lot of stress and burden and, and um, uh, it's, dif- it's difficult. I think it's probably greater for uh, men than women. Uh, I don't have any, statistics to back that up or any research but uh i do i do think that males are even more conditioned about being the provider and and having the big career and uh and so forth and yeah. and and women are have a little more cultural freedom to choose uh part-time full-time uh you know, less of the high stress career thing. Although there's certainly lots of examples of women going um, down that, I guess you could call it male route. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. You you talk about in in the book. You know the fact that our whole outlook is conditioned about jobs. You know the media talks about and the economy talks about job creation. Right. And and of course, you know, when you go to when you meet people at a party, the first thing that you're asked is, what do you do? And by that, they mean, you know, what do you do for a living? What is your job? Right. And and I've come across, um, you know, because I, I used to have a business myself. I've come across the attitude that a lot of people have when looking at resumes that, you know, a resume should show consistently longer periods of time that people have spent in jobs. And, you know, people make life choices um around you know what what their their job is as as really sort of a, a part of their identity i think right yeah so you make choices uh, uh in regard to your resume rather than um what do you think will lead to a greater happiness in your life right um, so i think that's true well, I guess the question then is, you know, um, what? Because a lot of people was would think, well, yeah, sure, maybe you have to make tough choices and and so forth. But you need a job, you need a career. It's one of the key things. The key things that one needs in life. It's a the way that you measure your success. You know, it's it's your security. So I guess my question would be, you know, for people who sort of think that that's basically a fact of life that you have to live with what what's wrong with this picture that we receive about jobs uh, n- nothing per se is is wrong with it uh especially if your career in quotes is something you really are passionate about doing and so forth um i think where we get into um a difficult situation is when 
um, the career is just something that's miserable for somebody. Right. Doing it because, well, that's what I'm qualified for, and that's how I can make a living, and blah, blah, blah. In the meantime, an entire lifetime can go by, and um, it's like the person has done only only for himself and not for, I mean, not for himself, only for um, the uh, the career and the the providing and that sort of thing and not for anything for himself personally. Yeah, yeah. And sadly, I mean, I think that that is a really widespread thing. You know, I think there's a lot of people who, who do feel miserable in their jobs and, and do feel that it's, a slog that must be, um, you know, a burden that must be carried, um, you know, in order to 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 sort of um, well to live. But but maybe this is a useful point to say, okay, so what then would what does unjobbing mean? Well, it it means to put you know life satisfaction to a higher place and a job just for the sake of employment. A little bit, at least a little bit farther down the priority ladder, um, and to have a little more, at least a little more of a balance and that sort of thing. Um, I, in my own experience, I've had um, lots of little jobs, you know, little part time things and this, that, and the other. And, you know, because I have need for income, of course. Yeah. Uh, but I've, I've, tr- I've always tried to place at a higher priority um, would I really like to do this and and would it would there is there some good that it does and is is there some satisfaction that I would gain out of it and 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 is it decent and worthy for the world and you know those kinds of ser- situations moving up higher in my thinking than Okay, is it a job? What does it pay? And 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 so forth. Right. Now, this this wasn't always the case because I remember you describing in the book that you you also grew up, you know, kind of absorbing those messages about job and and career. So, could you describe, you know, what was your experience? How did you come to the ideas of unjobbing? Well, for me, it's really trying to, you know, turn a lemon into a lemonade. Um, I, you have that expression? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Uh, because I really tried really hard in, in, as far as, you know, the job thing and the career thing, and I just basically failed. You know, it just didn't work out. And so finally, after beating my head against the wall enough where I was tired of that, hurt, I decided to look at it in a different way, and little by little, I just came to a different philosophy, um, and and that's how it came for me. I mean, who knows if I had been just really successful, uh, and quote, unquote, <laughs> in the other way, mm. I might not have ever uh, gotten to this. I don't know, but uh, I I clearly have just, my plight has been not uh, having that single full-time job. Um, so here I, I'm now, I, I uh, recently turned 58, uh, and I still haven't and probably now never will have one single full-time job. I think that's awesome. I think it's a really, and it sounds like you've had a really interesting and rich and varied experience because of that. It's been it's been different. It's been you know like the uh, the the beat of a different drummer. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean it's uh, been lots of interesting different things, and uh, I I it. But it's not what's you know what we say is normal. Yeah. Now, you originally, if I remember rightly, was it academia that you th- sort of were looking for a, a, a like a, a career job in, and then and then that was that the sort of first thing that you thought before you came to the idea of unjobbing? Well, I'm, I'm a musician, and that maybe should say it all right there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, 
you know, yeah, I was I was trying to get a a, a good job in at a university level um, teaching guitar. And back when I first started, you know, this is the the classical guitar field. Um, it was hardly offered at all, and and it's very very little. And things have really changed in the last few decades, so that now it's very widespread and and just about everywhere. But now, of course, there are uh, really great qualified people, really great players who are, you know, 25 to 30 years old with one more degree than I have and all that coming out. Right, you know, right. The dozens, you know. So it's, you know, I was just sort of my not good timing in terms of of how that all worked out. Mm. So, uh, so I've done, you know, a whole lot of freelance things with my music and that's you know generally worked out although it uh last couple of years uh it hasn't done that well because of you know the the economic recession so to speak right and it's you know i've definitely noticed a drop in there and so uh i think about well what else can i i've got this time in my hands here and uh, what else could I do? And so I look at other things, and I've pieced together. I got about four or five little things going on right now. Right, multiple <laughs> m- multiple sources of income to keep you going. Um, you know, so that you can do things that you that you love. Yeah, and and you know, I still I still do the music. Uh, obviously, I didn't turn uh, being an author of a book into a career either. <laughs> I wanted to actually mention that um, your your book is is not that easy to find, but I I believe that it is available digitally as well. So if yeah, you... it, it's it's actually not you know it's not it's an old book as books go. You know, it was written mm. back in the uh, mid nineties, mm. uh, and you know that's that's a that's ancient for books, right? Uh, and and I didn't do the conventional wisdom is to write another book and then write another book and you know like I said you know I'm not in this for a career I just wanted to share this stuff that was you know helping me out and and, uh, and giving me a different way to look at things that helped me uh, feel better you know yeah so I I did that um, but. Now the book is, you know, of course, you can get it on Amazon with the the, the second second hand, yeah, yeah, second hand, and there are uh, a few places to get it uh, digitally, mm. uh, so it can live on on and on that way. But I, you know, I'm not printing it anymore. Uh, haven't for a long time actually, <laughs> uh, but you know, it gets around. It's in you know, in the U.S., it's in you know, four or 500 public libraries mm. here and there, you know, and so those get passed around. And so, you know, it's still, it's still out there and still doing things. And every once in a while, I get a really nice email from a reader. And and like you, you just popped into my computer screen one day. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm very <laughs> glad. To that. How did you find it? Um, you know, I think I found it because there, uh, I actually saw a Facebook page on unjobbing before I knew that yep. your book um, existed. Hmm. Um, because I'm interested in entrepreneurship and finding, you know, ways of of increasing personal freedom, and that's really what this podcast is all about. You know, so I've I've looked at unschooling. And then I saw, you know, I knew what unschooling was, and then I saw unjobbing. Well, that sounds interesting. What what is unjobbing? And yeah. I actually wanted to ask you did you did you invent the term unjobbing, or was it was that around? As far as I know, I mean, I, yeah, uh, maybe somebody else had used it, but I I didn't know. I didn't know there was anything like that on Facebook either. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, the term so, but, is the term is being used by people. So you, yeah. you've created a concept, <laughs> it, isn't that? That's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, as far as I know, I I uh, but I I came up with the word because of the fact that we were doing um, homeschooling, unschooling, uh, and it seemed like a very um, um, analogous thing. In fact, I had read a book. I don't know if you know it. 
uh, called the Teenage Liberation Handbook. I have heard of it. Grace, uh, Grace Llewellyn. Yes, it's a very, very good book. And at the time, we had a teenager, and uh, I was, you know, I was re- or approaching teenage years. And I, I read this book. I really liked it. And that same kind of idea, well, you know, this is liberation for an adult. You yes. know, and so I, that, that was my subtitle was the Adult Liberation Handbook. And I wrote Grace Llewellyn and I said, you know, I really like your book. And I wonder if you don't mind if I kind of use that subtitle in this book I'm doing on this concept about unjobbing. And she wrote back with a lot of enthusiasm. And sure, you've got my blessing for that. Go for it. Awesome. And awesome. Uh, so that's how the, the title and everything came about. Mm. I think it's a very helpful term because it really does help to, you know, I, I've discussed the concept with, with other people and there's often a discussion, you know, well, is it just, uh, you know, reducing your expenses or is it just entrepreneurship? But I think that the, 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 the fact that it's called unjobbing, because it reminds me of unschooling, it mm. helps. It, I think it helps to, to explain that the concept, in, and tell me if this is how you see it, but the concept is really about, um, you know, change, becoming free of the sort of uh, career um, treadmill i suppose whichever way you choose to do that it's a question of, of 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 freeing up your time so that every day you can be doing things that you love yes 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 i think you have it and how would you see the um you know in terms of the different strategies for that um you know you 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 kind of um outline a few of them um in your book i mean one for example it seems to me that there's two different sort of kinds of approaches one is to basically pursue um money earning work in an area that you love so as you say for example let's say that you you really you're currently working as a software developer but you love music then you know presumably one approach would be to try and uh, earn money doing the thing that you love the other Mm -hmm. approach that you talk about is is more about getting sort of passive income so that you can support other projects that you like is that are those the two kind of ways could you talk a little bit about, about um, sort of strategies uh yeah i think those are two two of the uh, major ways i mean the the ideal is to uh completely combine how you spend your time uh on things that you really love to do with income earning and they they go together a hundred percent right in a, in a perfect world, that would be great for everybody. But even if that's not true or can't be done 100%, it can be done to some percent. Uh, and, you know, the higher the better. And I, I think that's how you do it. And I, I know a lot of people who who don't really like their job and really want to be doing something. And a good way to do that is to see if you can little by little uh, reduce the job that is bringing in the main money, but, you know, reduce the time that that's taken up, allowing time for the other thing that you really like. And maybe in time that you can find ways to bring in money with the the activity that you really love to do. And little by little, those percentages can change. Uh, And, you know, it may be a long process, but I think, People feel better as long as they see that they're going in that direction, at the least. Right, right. And, you know, one way or one thing that you've talked about quite a lot for people who do want to pursue this and who are thinking, well, this, you know, how how can I try and make this happen? Mm. One thing that you focus on is really to look very carefully at your expenditure Mm-hmm. And, you know, in particular, you contrast sort of the jobbing life where there are some very high costs just associated yeah. with even just having a job. Yes. Yeah. Uh, could you explain what you mean by that? Well, you know, the the clothes you buy, the transportation to get there, 
uh, you're so busy, you don't have time to cook, so you pick up something, uh, take out, or, you know, which costs you more than if you made it at home, uh, on and on and on. I mean, right. all those things cost money. Uh, and all that does, if you really crunch the numbers, is eat into what you're doing. Right. I mean, there are lots of uh, lots of people who have figured out that a job, an entire job, could be um, eaten up by expenses to have the job. Right. Uh, and so, unless you just really love to do that and want to do it, then you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. It doesn't make any sense if you really crunch the numbers. Right. And so, that, I was going to say that the expenses end of the equation, not even just job-related expenses, but other expenses, uh, is another important aspect, too, uh, to have those reduced so that there's less pressure for income. Right. Yeah, you describe it as one of the central sort of real um, revelations of unjobbing is you know, the more that you can reduce your expenses, the, mm. le the less you have to do work that you don't want to be doing, you know, the more time you've got to do what you actually do want to do, so to speak. Right. And, and uh, you know, the worst four-letter word is debt. Right. <laughs> right, absolutely, yeah. Well, and sadly, you know, a lot of people are getting into debt for not not for a let's say an entrepreneurial venture that might provide them with more financial freedom in the future but for right. but for consumption goods which yes. are a part of a lifestyle that then it costs more to maintain right which just sort of gets you deeper in the hole really as far as yes. not feeling free yeah it's it's a really really bad way to go about things i, I just think you know that one thing about just you know, spend less than you make. Just that one little concept is, or if someone says act your wage, right, <laughs> right, uh, it is just extremely important to have a handle on things. Um, otherwise, the the pressure and the stress uh, really really makes one's brain uh, work in in uh, not so good ways. Yeah, yeah. Now, another issue, um, sort of comparing a jobbing life to an undropping life, um, is, and you talk about this in the book, is just the, the huge amount of work that you do um, to pay for income tax and other taxes within, mm -hmm. within a jobbing environment, which, as you describe, you know, that, is then, that, the, that money is then going on you know, wars and other things that, you know, you that are not going to be in line with your values. Um, right. So what I understand from the book is that you see this also as a way of, of you know, actually having, um, you know, a chance to, to not see as much of your money go to, you know, things that you think are, are, are against your values, so to speak. Right. And, and unfortunately, in the United States, uh, it's about one of the worst places in that regard. Um, you know, we are the biggest uh, war spenders and, and, and some of the smallest for, you know, social good of any of the, you know, kind of modern industrialized countries of the world. I mean, the contrast between us and, say, for example, the Scandinavian countries is, is extreme. Right. Um, and... They're paying a lot of taxes, but they're getting incredible things for it. Right. You know, it's it's different if there's some real value that means something. I mean, they're getting incredible safety net and university education and 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 um, medicals covered and blah blah blah. I mean, it's I mean it's it's a far cry from uh, a lot of what the U.S. tax dollars goes towards so i think it that that can definitely vary uh depending on what country uh, one is living in right 
Well, I mean, obviously, the more that you earn in a, in a job environment, the more tax you're going to pay. Um, you know, in an unjobbing environment, I mean, I suppose, obviously, that if you're doing something entrepreneurial, then mm-hmm. there are some some uh, advantages in terms of things that you can write off that are associated with your entrepreneurial venture and so forth. But what mm-hmm. are you, you know, basically, what would you say to the argument? Well, you know, you've got to pay tax. So how on earth are you going to get around that? Uh, well, if your income is low, it could be pretty little. I mean, when over the last couple of decades, um, with the income we had in, in a one child, it was pretty much nothing most of the time, at least to the federal government. Uh, now, uh, actually, this this year, um, 2011, be the first time we won't have, you know, our, our kids too too old now. Uh, right. So it's going to change a little bit, um, but it still won't be huge, huge amounts of taxes. So I mean, there's uh, there's a lot of of things to weigh and balance, and like you know, I think I said this in the book. I'm not against taxes per se uh, but I am I don't like to spend money which is what taxes is on things that I don't believe in right. and, and and support and while it can't, can't ever be 100% to everybody liking the degree to which it is for me in the USA is pretty high uh, right. that, that I, I don't like what it goes for right um, I, have, and, I understand that. And if I were in another country, it might be quite a bit different. Yeah. And as far as I understand, you know, the general approach that you've taken is to really look carefully at how much money you actually need in order to be happy and hmm. and to also look at how you arrange your affairs to, to bear in mind, you know, that... Um, uh, that tax is going to be spent on on other things, and, and so as far as I understand, you you've looked to effectively try and um, live with a relatively uh, frugal outgoings. Is that would that be accurate? I mean, is that is that sort of the way that you've approached it? Yeah, relatively. Um, I think it's you know we're we're actually going to get above the threshold here coming up now because of losing the dependent and so forth. Right. So well, I'll see how that goes. I yeah. may. Have- Talk to you in another year and uh, <laughs> see see what I end up doing and whatever. But um, you know, I'm, I I know that I'll never be in a situation you know with big bucks. I mean, it's it's I know that. Right. Um, Can I ask you? You know, just in terms of unjobbing. Um, when you look at uh, your experience and the experience of other people that you might know, mm-hmm. is there anything that you can say about things that you think have really worked well, you know, patterns that you notice and things that have been, you know, harder for people, sort of you know, any, anything you notice in people who've managed to achieve a sort of unjobbing lifestyle that, uh, that you've noticed as a, that works well? Um, I think... One of the things is important is to keep communicating with others about what you're doing and uh, not only to get new ideas and whatever, but also to reinforce your own um, goals and philosophy. Uh, Because I know I've had, uh, you know, I'll confess that I've had a number of times where you know, the whole culture has just, you know, hit me again, and 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 I've felt terrible about, you know, just like in the beginning of the book, how much I've failed at doing the basic game of life and blah, blah, blah. Right. I, then I talk some more and connect with more and more other people and, and so forth, and then I start saying, oh, yeah, right. I don't really want that anyway. I I I like um, the the freedom and I, and and I, I 
I see the stress that other people have and oh yeah, right, I don't have that. Mm. Even though they're making, you know, four times what I do and, and so forth, but look at what they're going through and, so, and they don't really like it all that much and oh yeah, right. You know, it, it's in the it's so strong in the culture and the conditioning that I have found that I just need constant reminding about it. Um you know, I'm, I'm grateful that, that you found me and, and we've had these uh, communications because this is you're literally helping me doing this again. Awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. I think what I get from what you're saying, and I think it's a really important point, is probably the biggest barrier is the psychological one. I, I would agree. Yeah. And, and I think, yeah, the as you say, the really key thing there is to have... Uh, you know, kindred spirits, other people around you who yes. who you can t- talk to about uh, what it is that you're doing, and who and who you know you can share the excitement and the and the the joy of it. As because uh, heaven knows there's going to be enough people who will just frown and mean and say, "What do you mean you don't have a job?" <laughs> yeah, I think you're a kook. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And you know, I mentioned in the book, and I I had this for a while. We had this little you know voluntary simplicity group and uh you know and got together and you know maybe once a month and 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 talk and share what we've been doing and you know we support each other and go yeah that's great and uh that stuff is a big help right right you know for people who are thinking about this and and who are excited by the ideas um I want to mention that in the book you do have, you know, a whole section which is um, called uh, your plan for liberation uh, for mm-hmm. the for the reader that is, mm-hmm. and um, I would I'd really encourage people to 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 read the book itself, but just to give people a kind of um, overview or a, a sense of of what that might look like, could you say a little bit about? Um, you know, what somebody's plan for liberation might look like? Well, part of it is is nuts and bolts numbers, you know, spreadsheet or whatever, you know, this is these are my needs, these are my expenses, this is what I wouldn't need to have, this is what I absolutely have to have, and, and that's everybody's personal call and so forth. So part of it is that. Part of it is 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 philosophy this is this is how i really envision my life this is what i'd really like to be spending my time i have only a certain number of breaths here on earth how am i gonna what am i gonna be doing during all those breaths right and so forth and 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 it's a matter of kind of blending those two things together um and there's absolutely no one size fits all you know that's why i i deliberately made the book small and and no one should be copying anybody else no you know you get ideas and 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 support and and whatever from somebody else but it's it's a totally individually crafted tailored thing Right. So that, that, that's kind of the main idea behind that. And, you know, take that inventory, you know, what's really important to me? How do I really want to spend time? Um, you know, that, that personal kind of inventory. And then really take a good, long, hard look at the budget. Because uh, once, that, once that happens, um, people, people can usually see a lot of waste, uh, a lot of leaks, so to speak. Right. And where money's just leaking out. Right. And as you say, that is the kind of thing where it really, you know, for the, for all of the expenditure that you don't really need to be doing, given mm-hmm. that you have to pay the income tax and everything else on your actual uh, salary in order to get that um, net uh, uh that net income to spend on stuff it's actually there's a there's a kind of a multiplier over there where it's costing you a lot more than you think it is uh, mm-hmm. just to have those expenditures so if you can address that then mm-hmm. you know you get um, a lot of bangs for your buck so to speak yes yeah 
Well, I, you know, I, uh, I've been an entrepreneur and had my own business and, and sold it. Uh, and so, yeah, I consider that what I'm doing now is kind of unjobbing. And mm. I, I found your book uh, a really wonderful resource and, you know, great, it really uh, gave me a great perspective on, you know, all the opportunities there are for making sure that you do uh, what you love every day. Uh, so thank you again so much for writing mm. the book and for and for talking to me uh, about it. Well, thank you, Jake. <laughs> I would like to say just to make sure that if people, um, you know, want to find, uh, well, for example, your music as well, because you are mm. um, also you have I've seen on your website that you have um, that you have various CDs of, of your classical guitar and so forth. So mm. um, how how can people uh, find out more about about you and, and perhaps about the book? Well, yeah, the, the music stuff is on uh, michaelfogler.com. And so just explore away. There's, you know, audio and video and, and um, other little stuff for, like, guitar students, um, resources and so on. Great. Um, the book stuff, I would just say go to Amazon and you can read about, you know, what people think and, the, and little summaries and that sort of thing. Um, you know, the, there used to be this really great website called the Simple Living Network, um, and uh, he, uh, the, the fellow who was running that, decided to fold that up, and it no longer exists. And that's one of the main um, resources listed in the appendix of the book, which right. no longer exists. And 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 that stuff in the in the back really has not been kept updated. It's just too much of a fast-changing world, and everything's digital and pops in and out yeah. uh, on a dime. You know, every uh, every other day something is new and something goes away, and it's just so. Um, all of that is 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 sort of old stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I just think you know, internet, uh, googling, and so forth will will 